You know, and it's funny, you go back to this period of time, of course, summer school is 1987, and you go back to then, and you know, you, you'd kind of started there in the, in the, the early to mid-80s, and then you kind of caught fire there. You, you you did this role as Chainsaw in summer school. We saw you in Bad Dreams, of course. You played Jess Piccoli in the Fast Time show. But around this time, just as we go into, um, as we go into summer school, 1987, Kind of what was, uh, you know, your the process, uh, the audition process, uh, you know, obviously directed by Carl Reiner. You had to have some interaction with him. What was the process like of getting the role of Chainsaw? Um, it was surprisingly easy. And, um, yeah, I had, because I'd done, I'd done the Fast Times TV series, and initially Amy Heckerling was supposed to direct Summer School. And... So she, you know, she, she and she was taught while we were doing Fast Time, she was talking about that she was going to, during the summer, shoot this movie Summer School, and she really wanted two other guys that were on Fast Times to do it, uh, Patrick Dempsey and uh, Wallace Langham, who were, who were on the show. And what ended up happening was that the movie Carl Reiner had at Paramount didn't, they shelved it, and they gave him the pick of any script he wanted, so he picked summer school, so Amy was out. Uh, so they were aware of me from from Fast Times, and so I went in and read once Bart Carl, I think, and then, it, I mean, when I read the script, I, I remember telling my girlfriend at the time that the part was mine, that it was, it was mine, and then I went back and read with uh, Gary Riley, and Robert, I forgot his name, he was in E.T., um, read with him, those two guys to play the part of uh, Dave or Carl, and got the gig. I mean, it was very simple. It was deceptively easy. Well, a year uh, before summer school, you mentioned uh, how you worked on Fast Times. Uh, you worked on that with Courtney Thorne-Smith uh, for seven episodes. What was it like working with her on Fast Times and then reconnecting on summer school? It was great. I mean, I, you know, she, I always liked her and she, we were very friendly and, and, uh, she was really great and respected her and, uh, as an actress. And it was just, it was good. I mean, the, the, she, the, that, um, Summer School was my first movie. She'd done one more, one before that called Lucas. Uh, so she was sort of old hat at doing movies, but for me, it was a, it was a big deal. But it was not always, always nice to work with friends. I still like doing it. You also mentioned the legend Carl Reiner there, creator of the Dick Van Dyke Show, directed Summer School, also played Mr. Dordorian uh, in the movie. Uh, what was your experience working with Carl Reiner? It was... Uh, it spoiled me. He only worked... We'd only shoot from like 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock to 6 o'clock in the evening. He had a feeling his... his philosophy was you don't need to kill yourself it's just movies so let's do this and have a good time and it was a nice long eight week shoot very relaxed uh he was great the worst thing about working with carl reiner was him telling stories <laughs> and deciphering who he's talking about so he'd say you know my friend dick and oh yeah my friend gene and i would do this and I'd, oh, he's, he's talking about you know classic you know, legends like my buddy Sid and I would. We were working on the TV show. Like, yeah, I know what that show is, cause it's an Tyke show. He's talking about it. so, uh, or your show of shows, and you know, it was just really cool. So that was that was the worst part of working with Carl Reiner was try, figuring out who he was talking about. Well, you mentioned it spoiled you. Kind of go more into that. Uh, that was your first movie. Kind of how did that spoil yeah. you? What did you expect moving on that you thought to you? Maybe it was normal, but Carl, it was special for Carl Reiner. Well, I, I I expected all the parts I got to be as well written as that, and the director to... Well, actually, all the directors I worked with really loved what they were doing. Um, but he was, he was especially encouraging uh, to us, the, the, young, uh, the young actors, to, to be creative and explore stuff. And... And we had time to do it, and it was it was really nice. We just had a lot of it was like I said, very relaxed, and that that's what was what spoiled me. I think up until 
I, I think up until Straight Outta Compton, that was the biggest budget movie I worked on, you know, which is more about my career than anything else. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was that. Yeah, it, it, the film grossed thirty-five million dollars, making it the thirty-second uh, most successful film of, of uh, 1987, which really isn't bad. Um, you talked about how right. easy the process was, which is kind of funny because uh, Carl Reiner has said that there were hundreds of youths that were uh, interviewed for the various uh, student roles. But he said about you guys that the actors were picked. Uh, you guys clearly stood out from the others because uh, they were the best. He never imagined finding a supporting group as good as this. During filming, they consistently wow. created over and above what he had written on the page. That, I mean, just that's got to be an unbelievable mark uh, from someone like him to, to talk about you guys like that. Yeah, it, it, it was really nice. And he was, like I said, very encouraging and very respectful of the different ways we worked and... And it was just great, you know. It's it's always nice to hear a director go, just do, just do your thing. You're you're doing great, and, and do it again. And he would let he would let me add lib stuff, which was nice. Um, and I, I, he, I think he didn't really let anyone else really add lib as much. Um, so that was cool that I got his his trust for that. Well, what was your, uh, kind of talk about your experience on and off set during filming, uh, who you hung out with, whether it's Mark Harmon, someone else, uh, any stories you can share? The, during lunch, we would play Simon Says, and I would, most of the time I would lead it, and so Kirstie Alley, she only worked, we only crossed schedule for about a week. She was only at the school for a week. And so we didn't really see her much. But so the week she was there, every day at lunch, she would say, can I play Simon Says? And I would be the leader, and I'd say, yeah, just stand over there. And she'd move over there, and I'd say, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, she didn't say Simon Says. And uh, that that was fun. That was fun to do that to her every day. And I got her. And if she did manage to get into the game... I would usually get her out within the first couple things. Well, <laughs> well it, that kind of stands to reason. I mean, your character of Chainsaw was, uh, you know, he he was a bit diabolical and clearly, um, you know, a bit of a deviant, uh, you know, I, yeah. although I do wonder, you know, if you still have the Iron Maiden shirt that he wore, because I'm a big Maiden fan. I would love to know where that is. Did you, did you keep any of the props? Did you keep any of the, any, do you have anything from the movie? I mean, you guys did a bunch of, uh, you know, makeup effect work for uh, for that, uh, the, the major gross out scene. I mean, do you, did you keep any memorabilia? Do you have anything from that? Yeah, I have the, the life mask they made to make the appliances. Uh, the, the facial appliances for the killer bunny scene. I I had the jacket. Um, I'm not sure. What, is this a PG or R? What is this? Oh, this could be. Uh, anything goes, Dean. It's all uh, good. There was a girl. There was this girl who I, I wanted to have sex with, and she wanted. I had the chainsaw jacket, and so she wore the chainsaw jacket while we had sex and then um and then she took it home with her to clean it and i never saw it again oh, that's uh, devastating I, also, I have the i have the cap i have the chainsaw cap and i, I you know some people, i actually was just i was in the garage and i was just like, moving some stuff around i found the publicity packet for the movie wow wow yeah. Do, do you find... Oh, and there's also, I also, the other one, other memorabilia I have, they used to do uh, test screenings mm -hmm. for audiences, and there's this card, it was a cardboard piece of paper that they would give to every audience member with a bunch of questions about, like, what they liked and what they didn't like about the movie, and cast members they liked or didn't like, and there was a little golf pencil attached to the thing. I have one of those from the, oh, awesome. from the test screening. Yeah, do, so that's pretty cool. Do you... You know, this movie's become, I, I, I mean, honestly, very nearly, very close to an, an iconic, almost cult film from this from this time period. Does it does it surprise you? Do you do you find that people recognize you from this t consistently? Is this what you probably are recognized on the street in L.A. for more than anything? I mean, does it happen uh, frequently? Yeah, it's you know, it's interesting. I can tell what kind of person it is 
for the movie they recognize me for. Yeah. <laughs> I, I am most, I'm most recognized for summer school. And now that I'm, you know, in my mid fifties, people don't really recognize my face as much, but they recognize my voice. And so they, they, they think, are you, they, the, it's usually, are you an actor? I recognize you from what do I, and I say summer school and I go, Oh my God. So there's that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, the, the people who recognize me from Bad Dreams versus the people who recognize me from summer school are very different people, as are the people who recognize me from Rockula are very different from the people who recognize me from summer school, which is, you know, fine thing to, fine problem to have, I guess. It is kind of strange because a lot of those films are linked in so many ways. You've got, uh, you know, a lot of actors that are in there are in a lot of, you know, horror movies from the time period, and they're, it's all kind of interlinked, you know, that time period is so synonymous with... Uh, you know, these films, are, you know, just stand out. I mean, Summer School, it's like one of those ones that you just, you know, USA Up All Night. I think that was my first uh, first time, you know, in the in the mid, in the the late 80s catching that as a kid. Like, it's just one of those things that stand out. I mean, did you ever f- figure that it would become such a part of the American lexicon and 32 years later? Uh, I, I hoped it would. I mean, when I read the script, I, I remember reading the script thinking it was a great script, really funny really, really funny script and had this really nice heart and charm and a little subversion to it uh, that I thought was lovely. You know, a lot of, there was a lot cut out of the movie that involved a lot of the other students. Fortunately for me and Gary Riley, they kept most of our stuff in at the expense of the other students. Um, so that was that was very flattering, very very nice. But I, you know, I always thought it was a great movie, and and I, you know, we were very disappointed when it came out. Our thunder was stolen by the Lost Boys. Oh, it came out right on the yeah. right on the same. I think it was the same weekend, and they stole our very hip, cool cachet and the focus of of who the cool actors of the summer were going to be. Uh, and we all thought it was going to be us, but the Lost Boys sort of stole our thunder. And we also, I remember we were at Patrick Laboratory's house to watch uh, the Cisco and Ebert review, and it was not good. <laughs> it's not good at all. And uh, so we, we all had very high hopes for how well the movie would do, and it, it did okay, but, you know, it, it, we, we had hoped it would have done better. But I, I'm glad that, it, that people still like it. It's, you know, it's a testament to everyone who is in it and everyone who is involved in it. And, and yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it always made me, I was always fearful of uh, being forced into a summer school situation as a student. It never happened, but like I said earlier, now oh. now as a teacher, I guess I'm the Mr. Shoop. I'm teaching summer school, high school PE, so I'm going to be Mr. Shooping oh. it up this summer, Dean. So we're just going to hope for the best, man, and hope I don't have any chainsaws or Daves uh, to deal with. It's, it's funny, my dad is a high school teacher. Oh, wow. Or was a, was a high school teacher. Uh, he's still alive, but he, he's retired. But every year invariably after the movie came out someone at finals would do the scream and the tension breaker <laughs> had to be done and occasionally they would do it and they didn't know that he was my dad that's that funny cool. wow that's <laughs> i love that I've had, um, other teachers, I've had other people who are teachers tell me that yeah thanks a lot because at finals them, them people always do the tension breaker scream so um that's cool. that is awesome uh, dean before we let you go man i tell you um you now we got to get something straight here because you, um, we got kind of a connection here. You've worked with, and I think you shot some kind of a pilot for the band Steel Panther. We're big fans and had had those guys on our music podcast oh. before. What 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 did you? Was it Pussy Whipped? What music video did you direct for Steel Panther? Uh, uh, I did two uh, for them. I did uh, Fat Girl and Pussy Whipped. Yeah. yeah, I played in a I played in a band with two of the guys from from Steel Panther, and uh, yeah, so. When it when they did their first record, I also did the artwork for their first record, a uh, whole wow. um, And so when they they wanted to make a video, they didn't know anyone else who could do that. So I I did, and so we did. Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, just that fact girl, and then a few years later, yeah, we did a a, a pilot, and then they sort of screwed me over and. Uh, and they apologized, and uh, yeah, and then they screwed me over again. So, fuck Steel Panther. Oh well, it, uh, 
I hate to, hate to have it leave it on that note. I was hoping there would be a redemption story in there. Um, <laughs> that, that's uh, that's terrible because I would have loved. I saw the uh, just like a little trailer or something for that. Uh, I, I didn't even know it existed, and obviously, I'm guessing it never it never made it. But um, yeah. Dean, Dean, I tell you what, man, you are hilarious. We've been uh, you, you, it's like um, we've been Facebook friends a long time, but I always see you del- you know delving into into music stuff. You're always at shows out in, in Hollywood, man. We're we're kind of cut from the same cloth, man. And then I tell you, cool. it's just uh, a pleasure to, to have talked to you about this and to go back and, and, and do it with you, man. We can't thank you enough. And uh, we'll catch up soon, man. If you ever have anything to promote, anything that you got coming up, uh, hit us up and we'd be glad to do it with you, man. Excellent. Pleasure talking to you. Appreciate you, Dean. Thanks.